Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and today I've got a special collaboration video for you guys to check out. I'm collaborating with No Limits On, a fantastic YouTuber with a ton of amazing content. I will have a link in the description below to check out his channel, so make sure to go over there and check out what he's got going on. Again, some really amazing content, high quality, well worth your time, and there'll also be a unique collaboration between him and myself on his channel as well. So check that one out. And in today's video on my channel, I've got a collaboration with him on the top six drone tips for beginners. Starting off with my first tip for drone beginners, and that's using the DJI Flight Simulator to practice. Now, this is something that is invaluable because you're not gonna damage a real life drone. You've already spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a flying robot. Now, the last thing you want is for it to crash out of the sky, hit into a tree, or for it to malfunction in a weird way that you could have avoided if you practice a little bit more. So my first recommendation is getting into the DJI Flight Simulator, which you can download right now. I'll have a link in the description below to check it out, but it's well worth your time. It's really comprehensive. There's tons of options, tons of different drones to use, and it's really realistic. You know, you get a lot of like wind realism within there. You get like the controls are on point, the interface is on point. It's everything that you would expect from flying the drone in the real world, but it's in a computer simulator where you don't have to worry about damaging a thousand dollar drone potentially. As you navigate through the software, there are a ton of options and a ton of different features. There is a paid version that you can get, but the free version gives you everything you need for this basic test here. I wouldn't recommend spending that extra money unless you really want to, but it actually shows you a ton of different drone models. So you can go through and see the different drone models that are available out there, and they've got a beautiful 3D model design to each drone. So you can get a close up on the drone that you might wanna buy next, or the drone that you're thinking about buying first. It depends at what level or stage you're at in your drone journey, but it just gives you a chance to look into the different drone models and you know where the sensors are on them, where the battery is located, how it's going to actually look when you get it in person right in front of you. And then from there you have a ton of options to connect different controllers to the software. So you can use like an original Xbox controller, one of the brand new Xbox One controllers, or even the actual flight controller from your drone. Not every flight controller is supported in the DJI Flight Simulator, but a fair few of them are supported. So just have a look through what is supported, connect up your controller to your computer or laptop or whatever you're using, and it will let you know whether it is a compatible controller. And then from there, you have a chance to actually fly a drone in a virtual world. And again, the benefit of this is that you get to test it in a controlled, safe environment, and it is realistic. It's still a game at the end of the day, so it's not gonna be the exact same experience. You know, it's gonna be a little bit more predictable in the fact that it is a programmed video game where the real world isn't programmed, or maybe it is, depends on uh, who you're asking that question to, but it does give you a chance to actually control the drone, see what the operating system's gonna look like, see what the actual software from your phone's gonna look like, the app that you're using, play around with the controls, you know, see how it responds in different conditions, and also play around with the camera functionality, play around with, you know, different drones that you might be looking into getting later on in your drone journey, and different environments as well. You know, there are a few different environments that you can fly through in the free version, which again is fantastic. You really don't have to spend that extra money. You can play around in a variety of different environments, and it's all available in the free version. Another benefit of using the DJI Flight Simulator is that you can play around with different points of view. So you can have that point of view where you're looking down at the controller, which is a very common view that you'll have when you're on the field. You can also use the line of sight view where it like focuses in on the drone. So as you fly the drone away, it will actually zoom in, which is a little unrealistic, but it will show you where the drone is in relation to the character, which is really important because when you're flying your drone, you need to keep it in line of sight. And this actually just shows you how challenging that can be. As you know, you're flying around a corner, it will be completely out of line of sight then, and you'll lose your orientation. It'll be confusing from this point of view because you can't physically see which way the drone's facing or where it's even located. So I think that's a really good test to show you that 
you need to be careful. You know, you need to be mindful of where your drone is and you need to keep it in line of sight. But then you also get the interface where you can see the application. So that shows you the distance from the drone, that shows you the height, that shows you a few other metrics that you might need to look into when you're flying your drone. And it gives you a clear interface to show you what you're gonna be seeing when you're flying your drone. So again, if you're a beginner, if you're starting out in these early phases, even if you're you know, a relatively experienced pilot, it's always handy to come into the flight simulator just to test your skills again, and just to hone in and become a more confident, competent drone pilot. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, I'm a videographer and a drone pilot from Russia, Moscow, and thank you very much Dan for having me on your channel, and let's get to the tips. Buy an ND filter for your drone, because most of the drones, they have fixed aperture of f2.8 and you cannot adjust the aperture at all. Only the Mavic 2 Pro has physical aperture, but it's not enough to be properly exposing at 1 over 50th shutter when you shoot 25, for instance, frames per second. In Russia we shoot in 25. FPS. So basically you do have to buy an ND filter to set the proper shutter speed and I have a review of the filters from Freewell, VND filters, set of two filters and they are with mist effect. You can check it right here or you can use the link down below. I guess Dan will put a link under his video uh, in the description and you'll find out why it is important in that video if you want to check this out but of course we do need the cinematic movement of your drone footage during the first three or four years of drone piloting i wasn't using the nd filters and then i started out and i saw a huge improvement in cinematicness of my picture quality and the overall feeling about my drone footage so i highly recommend you using an nd my next tip is enabling the overexposure warning now this is available in pretty much all dji drones from my understanding even the lower end mini models, they all have the option to enable overexposure warning. Now this can be quite a overwhelming, distracting thing to have like within the interface. What it is, is it's the zebra patterns and it can look really overwhelming, but what that actually means is that that part of the frame is overexposed. Now the importance of knowing what's overexposed is because you wanna make sure that your footage is perfectly exposed. You know, if you want a shot to look crispy, if you want it to look sharp, if you want it to really catch the attention of people, then you do not want the image to be overexposed. It's gonna completely lose its detail, it's gonna look really washed out and white, and it's just not gonna look professional at all. So the benefit of having that overexposure warning enabled is you can pick up on that before you get home and see the footage. So when you're on the field flying your drone, you can see that, wow, okay, there's a fair few zebra patterns everywhere. It's looking like it's overexposed. So you can adjust the settings and you can play around with the EV or you can play around with the other settings if you're in the pro mode. And you can adjust that to see when the overexposure becomes less harsh. So when there's less zebra patterns, that means that it's not as overexposed. And then you know that it's going to be a perfectly exposed shot. You can also utilize the histogram to make sure that you're getting you know, a clear bell curve and it's not going either end of the histogram. So if it's one end or the other, it's gonna be either underexposed or overexposed. So the histogram alongside the overexposure warning gives you a clear representation of how well the exposure is going for that particular frame that you're shooting, that particular shot that you're capturing right there in the moment. Use 10-bit codecs when you have this option. For instance, Mavic 2 Pro and the DJI Air 2S, they both have 10-bit codec and you get extra color information from your drone and you can get much better results after color grading this footage. So if you do have this option, use it. Also, I have uploaded to the cloud a little LUT that you can use to color grade your footage from Mavic 2 Pro. I use this LUT a lot. Lots and lots. <laughs> and I'm really satisfied with the results. But be careful and set your white balance correctly, of course, and do not overexpose your footage. This is not raw, it's only 10 bit. If your drone doesn't have 8 bit codec, you'll use standard picture profile, not D Log M or Cine something, only the standard picture profile. And be very precise in terms of your white balance and exposure. Do not overexpose it. I've been using the standard profile on the DJI Mini SE, which I also have a separate review on. It's only 2.7K in standard profile, but the shots are pretty pleasing in my opinion, and you definitely can achieve good results. But if you shoot in a flat profile with an 8-bit drone, and you'll try to color grade it, you'll see some artifacts and color banding, and you don't want to have this. My final tip 
is really important and it might sound like an obvious one it might sound like something you don't have to think about because it's a drone and it's worth thousands of dollars and it shouldn't fail on you but something really important to do is inspect your drone for faults now this sounds like one of those things that you might just overlook and not even think about but it can save you thousands of dollars if you've got a brand new drone like the air 2s and you can prevent anything from happening to it. If you can prevent it from malfunctioning midair because you've actually inspected it and you've picked up on something before it became a problem, then this is an invaluable tip to remind yourself of regularly. Like check your drone before every single flight. It's so important. And a few specific tips that will really help you with this is I would recommend taking photos of your drone. Like straight when you buy it, this is a brand new drone, literally take photos of it. Like get the battery, take it out, Take photos of the battery so you know the shape of it, you know the form factor, you know like how it's meant to look brand new. Also inspect the actual body of the drone, the arms of it, the camera, inspect the sensors, inspect that the motors spin freely. You know these are brushless motors, there should be zero resistance, they should just glide like that. And if you are noticing some sort of resistance, there might be a build up of grit, dirt, dust, something in the motors here. And if you've got a compressed air can with you, you can blow that out and dislodge anything in the motors, which can actually prevent the motors from overheating. You know, if these motors overheat midair and they malfunction, this thing's gonna fall out of the sky, but you could have prevented that. There are some obvious things that you can do here to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Like I said, make sure these spin freely. The motors need to spin freely. These are brushless motors. There should be zero resistance going on here. It shouldn't feel like it's grinding. It should just glide, just naturally glide. So that's what that needs to feel like. Uh, that's what that needs to look like as you spin it. It's just effortless. You also wanna make sure that the arms are you know, not cracked. If there's any sort of structural damage and the arm is you know, bent or there's a, a major like kind of gouge through it or some sort of structural damage that could cause an issue. You know, there's exposed wire here, potentially that's been cut by something. You just don't know. And if you're not inspecting it, then you're not going to know. The other thing is regularly inspecting the battery, making sure that it actually fits into the holster here. Make sure that it's not like something you have to force because if you're forcing it in or it's not fitting properly, there might be an issue with the battery. Maybe it's ruptured, maybe it started to bubble, you know, maybe there's an actual real issue with the structural integrity of the battery, maybe the cells are damaged, it could just be completely destroyed. And if you're trying to force it in there and pushing it through and you're just going, oh, it's probably gonna be fine, and you launch that drone and the battery is gonna fail at any point, then your drone's gonna fall out of the sky. So you need to be aware of that, and if it starts to happen, replace that battery, you know, Take it to a drone repair store and get a new battery in there straight away. The other important thing that a lot of people seem to neglect or forget about or aren't even aware of is that these little sensors here are the obstacle avoidance sensors. They need a visual line of sight. They need to be able to actually see an obstacle, you know? Like if this is covered, it's not gonna be able to see anything. So if you've got fingerprint marks on here, if you've got like some grass that's lodged in there or sand or dust or, you know, whatever it may be, completely covering that vision, then the drone's not gonna be able to avoid an obstacle and it might hit into something, which in turn could destroy your drone. So again, make sure this is clean, make sure the camera's clean, make sure you're actually inspecting it and taking good care of it. It's honestly one of the more important things to do that I just don't see enough drone pilots doing. And especially beginners, they're not taught these things. And I think it's really invaluable information to just like actually care about your drone, you know, inspect it regularly and just get to know it. Actually really get to know your drone uh, and make sure that it's regularly inspected for faults. When you just get a drone and you fly for the first time, you almost always put it like very high and you simply shoot straight away without even moving the drone or moving it just slightly. It's not that cool. First of all, I prefer to use parallax shots when we have a foreground object and a background object and we go to the uh, side, for instance. But be careful because not all the drones have the side sensors and they're not working in all the modes 
for instance in the Mavic 2 Pro, only in the tripod mode or just like point of interest. And doing so, you add depth to your shot. It's kind of becoming 3D, not 2D shot, which is cool. And the drone footage looks so much better when you have this motion in your shot. The second cool shot is flying close to objects or through objects, like in this shot, because you also add depth and the viewer sees that it's not a flat picture. The viewer sees the movement through something and it really amplifies the cinematicness of your footage. And the third shot is revealing shot. So imagine you're flying from like down there and there is an object and you fly from here to here and you reveal something very important for you. It also adds depth, it's kind of three-dimensional and it adds a little bit of drama to your shot. So guys, keep those tips in mind and good luck with your drone footage and drone flying, basically. From Russia with love, Oleg Nikitin, No Limits on channel and thank you once again, Dan, for having me on your channel. See you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye. Those are the top six tips for beginner drone pilots. Thank you so much for No Limits On for joining me for this video. Definitely check out his channel. He's got some amazing content over there. Like I said, I have a link in the description below to check out his channel. Also check out the collaboration that we did over there on his channel. But I really do appreciate his time coming on here. He's got some really valuable tips that I would recommend getting your head around, familiarizing yourself with what he's talking about. And the three tips that I've really dived into here are to make sure that you're prepared for anything to happen. You know, that's the thing that is so important here, to make sure that you're prepared for a problem to occur, you know? Pick up on it before it becomes a problem. If you're practicing with a flight simulator, you're gonna be prepared, you know? You're prepared for what's gonna happen in a real world scenario. And then if you're actually inspecting the drone for faults, then you're gonna know what the drone looks like when you originally bought it, compared to, let's say, two months on. There might be something going wrong with it, maybe the motors aren't spinning freely, and then you know that that's a problem and you need to address it then and there. Whether you get an air compressed can, blow it out, dislodge whatever's in the motor, or you take it to a drone repair store and get it sorted before it actually becomes a real problem. But anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you gained a lot out of this, out of these top six tips for beginner drone pilots. Let us know in the comments below which tip was the most important for you. Let us also know if you have some other tips. You know, maybe you can help some other people in the comment section below. I really do appreciate it though. You guys are fantastic. You're a phenomenal community of drone lovers and I can't wait to see you in the next video. All right guys, chat to you soon. Peace.